fine. So just to write it more properly, this compound that we have got looks like this. So this is a amide, if you know. This is a substituted amide. Amide is this functional group. C double bond O and H2. This functional group is amide. When you remove one hydrogen from this nitrogen and add another group as methyl has been added, that becomes substituted amide. So this is a amide, a substituted amide that you get after Backman's rearrangement. Fine. Now, in this case, what we did, we considered that methyl is parallel to this orbital. Now, this, there, there could be a situation when hydrogen is parallel to nitrogen, the orbital of nitrogen, like this. So, in that case, hydrogen will migrate to nitrogen, a plus charge will develop on this carbon, and then oxygen of water will attack to this carbon, COH will develop tautomerization C double bond O. Now you go through the mechanism once, you sit back, note down the mechanism and see each and every step and map it in your brain. Because when I, as I speak, you must be able to find that mapping that you have already mapped up in your brain, right? So you have to learn to quickly write the product. If you have been given this oxime and you have been given H2SO4, and without going through all the steps, how quickly, how would you write the product? You would write the product, nitrogen comes, this hydrogen migrates to nitrogen, plus charge develops on this carbon, water attacks this carbon, and C double bond O after tautomerism develops on this carbon. So the carbon develops C double bond O, and this nitrogen, this hydrogen comes to this nitrogen. So this becomes NH2. This will be the final product. This will be ethanamide. So that's how you will quickly quickly you have to write the product. So let's practice some problems to how to as to how to write the product of Backman's rearrangement. So for that you have to go through the mechanism once as we have learned now. Now once you have gone through the mechanism then you can quickly write the product after some practice. Suppose I have I have benzaldehyde, I added H2SO4 to this, I got A plus B. On A plus B or in, on differently on A and on B I added H2SO4, I got C from here and when I added H2SO4 on B, I got D from here. So you have to tell me what is A, B, C and D. So, no, 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 I'm sorry. You'll not add H2SO4 here, you'll add hydroxyl amine to benzaldehyde and correspondingly we'll have two isomers A and B and each isomer will give one final product C and one will give D. So to write A and B, this reaction we have studied in the last lecture, in the last reaction that we studied about addition, elimination, reaction. Now this goes like this, hydroxyl amine will add like this, this we have learned to how to write, remove H2 from here, O from here, H2O will go away as water and there is a C double bond N like this, right? And this is the orbital. Either pH can be parallel to the orbital or H can be parallel to the orbital. Now any one situation can occur during the reaction. Now both are possible product, so there will be two possible product. These two are isomers of each other. So either any one of them you can take as A and the other one will be B. Considering this as A and this as B, we can get C and D. So when you are having this reaction, when you are having this addition elimination reaction, depending upon the configuration, there will be two possible products. Now these two are the possibility here. Now if this is A 
and you are adding H2SO4 to this, then the reaction is Beckman's rearrangement. Now this phenyl is going to come to this orbital, migrate, and is going to be attached with nitrogen. And this carbon, after tautomerism, is going to develop C double bond O. That's what we have seen. So to write C, C would be like this. A hydrogen on the carbon, this carbon, C double bond O on this carbon, then nitrogen, a hydrogen because of tautomerism, and this phenyl migrating here. So phenyl will be attached to nitrogen. Fine. This would be C. Similarly, look for D. For in D, this hydrogen is migrating. For this hydrogen will be attached to nitrogen. Look at this carbon. This carbon is attached with phenyl. A C double bond O is going to develop on this carbon after tautomerism. Then nitrogen. This hydrogen is going to migrate. And one more hydrogen in the step of tautomerism is going to come here. So this is going to be a non-substituted amide. This is going to be a substituted amide. Fine. That's how you are going to you are going to write the product of Beckman's rearrangement. So now when you have mastered this reaction, let's solve some more problems. Problem number one. Identify A and B. So the first step is addition elimination reaction that we have studied before. So that will be simple addition of hydroxyl amine giving you oxine. So A is simple. This time around there will be no two possibility because of symmetry. This time around there will be only one compound. There will be no isomers because of symmetry. Fine. Now this is A. This is done. Now you have to do the Beckman's rearrangement because you're adding H2SO4 on an, on an oxyme. So this time there is no group. I mean this, this is a bond on the side and a bond on the side. So this bond will migrate on nitrogen because this is parallel to this orbital. So if this migrates, then the, 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 the bonding of this carbon will break with this carbon and this carbon is going to be attached with this nitrogen. So the ring, which is a six member ring, is going to become a seven member ring. You start from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you ended here, right? But this time you'll go to nitrogen, seven. So the ring will become a seven member ring. What will happen is this bond will start to break and a bond will start to be formed here. When this bond breaks completely, this bond is formed completely, right? So this nitrogen, is added into the ring. This carbon develops a plus charge and then after addition of water and tautomerism, this carbon has C double bond O. So what comes out of here? All right, this is a seven member ring, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is a C double bond O on the carbon, which is directly attached with this nitrogen. So this is what we are going to get. This is a lactam. This, this kind of cyclic amide are called lactam. So depending upon the number of carbon in the ring, it's called alpha lactam or beta lactam. If you have three member ring, it's called alpha lactam. For four, it's beta lactam. For five, it's gamma lactam. For six, it's delta lactam. And for seven, it's eta lactam. So this is a seven member ring. So this is called as eta lactam. Fine. So if you have, if you, if you have a enzyme like this having six member ring or a five member ring, then during Beckman's rearrangement, there will be a ring expansion and you will end up in a cyclic amide called lactam. So this uh, would be B. And what you had A was this. This is A and this is B. 
fine okay